I'd like to talk to you about pancreatitis in dogs. So this is Snoopy drawn. This is uh, the windpipe going through to the lungs and the heart. We have a structure here called the diaphragm, which separates the chest from the abdomen. Through that chest area is the esophagus and the food pipe that joins in the abdomen, the stomach. And just after the stomach contents empty, we have these two major organs, the liver with the gallbladder, which empties out into the small intestine. And on this side, there's two leaves, okay, which are, is the pancreas. And that also has a duct that empties out in the same area of the small intestine, okay? The intestine obviously then is wrapped around and becomes the large intestine, which passes food out uh, through the anus. And this is the kidney. Um, this ultimately is the bladder. So what happens when things go wrong? If there is a level of inflammation in the body, then not only does necessarily the intestines become inflamed, but also the liver can become inflamed. But most, most importantly here for pancreatitis, the pancreas can become inflamed. So pancreatitis in dogs literally stands for inflammation of the pancreas in the dogs. It's not a diagnosis, it is a symptom of what is going on. When we have pancreatitis in dogs, the main signs that we can see, where it sits becomes very uncomfortable, very painful. Um, the enzymes, instead of actually activating in the intestine here, actually start to activate within the pancreas. And as such, they also digest the fats and proteins within that organ. That obviously is very painful. Being where it is, abdominal pain, because it sits in the abdomen. It can cause vomiting. Obviously, it sits right next to the stomach, so inflammation there. It can cause vomiting through both pain and nausea from um, the, the inflammation. It can cause diarrhea. Um, again, inflammation in the small intestine. It can al actually also cause inflammation of the liver and the gallbladder. So sometimes we can get jaundice because all the inflammation in this area closes off the bile duct and we end up actually with circulating bile instead of it going into the intestine. In pancreatitis in dogs, there's two forms. One of these can be an acute form where this suddenly becomes inflamed. It's active with lots of um, inflammation causing the pain uh, that I've talked about um, directly there and can be responsive to the levels of ingester, that's food coming in, which contains fats, okay? Anything with high fats, high proteins, is obviously gonna signal the pancreas to create more enzymes. If it's already damaged and inflamed, those enzymes activate within the pancreas and cause more problems, okay? So that is why this little myth that you should never feed a pancreatic dog fats in their diet has emanated because in the acute form, absolutely, it could cause problems. However, there is number two, which is the, the chronic form of pancreatitis. Chronic means long-term, and basically, if it's not currently inflamed, but has lots of scar tissue in it because of how long it's been going on, that organ isn't necessarily going to function normally. It's not gonna produce the right amounts of um, fat digesting enzymes or protein digesting enzymes. So what can happen is that this, when you give them normal foods, if they're not in the right form, the body can't digest them properly. So you may get weight loss, you may get diarrhea because of a lack of digestion of the food that's gone through, you may get um, increased fats in the feces, steatorrhea, okay, that's a, a oiliness on the, on the stool. Um, all of those can emanate from a chronic form of pancreatitis. And it's really important in the chronic form that actually we are giving enough food materials for energy and, and protein assimilation without there needing to be a high level of pancreatic enzymes produced. So that can be supplementing the diet with pancreatic enzymes. 
So in acute pancreatitis in dogs, um, we can often see that the triggers for pancreatitis can be activating the enzymes within he, in the pancreas. Now that could be fats, etc. But remember, that's only in the acute form, and actually, it's not the fats per se that have caused the pancreatitis. So the main triggers that we look for are foods which can excite inflammation within the intestine. So we could be looking at high grain diets, lots of lectins which are found in grains and some vegetable matters uh, on the outsides, um, causing inflammation, excessive starch and sugars causing inflammation because of insulin drive and glycation. That's a sugar sticking to the fats within the cells. Um, so anything that can cause inflammation, and that includes some drugs too, can lead to pancreatitis. So based on what can cause pancreatitis, I would say if anything, you need to think about reducing foods which cause inflammation. So reducing grains, reducing starches, reducing lectins, um, all of those things will help reduce inflammation in the intestinal tract and therefore in the pancreas. You also need in the acute form to reduce the fat levels, but only whilst there is a flare up of pancreatitis. As soon as the enzymes drop and the uh, dog is in remission, i.e. not causing abdominal pain and some of the acute symptoms, then we need to feed a good whole foods, including fats and proteins that can be easily digested. When a dog has acute form of pancreatitis, it is really important that we acknowledge that they're going to feel nauseous, they're going to feel sick from uh, what the pain in the abdomen. It is also important not to totally starve the dog. So this is where sometimes bone broths uh, can be really useful additions that we're constantly feeding a trickle through, which is feeding the gut flora, reducing inflammation within the general intestinal area, helping the body to continue its normal processes whilst the pancreas calms down. Whilst ever this is inflamed and throbbing, we need to think about reducing that inflammation. So don't feed fats um, at that point. Once the dog has recovered from the acute form, we need to encourage their appetite. Now there are some things to stimulate their appetite, um, but ultimately adding things that are flavorsome and that are going to give them all of the fats and proteins they need are really, really important so we don't end up with weight loss and even adding in some raw pancreas from beef or lamb or pork can actually help the digestive process by adding that in at this stage so that those enzymes are activated and actually working on the food as it goes through. Whenever a dog has had an extensive period of vomiting or diarrhea, then one of the biggest causes of ill health can be down to a lack of fluid circulating through the heart, um, effectively getting around the organs, keeping everything functioning, including the brain. If they lose too much fluid, the kidneys can stop working and stop producing urine. So it's really important that we get plenty of fluids in. Now we can do this with bone broths because we can add water to those, make sure that they get plenty of fluids. But occasionally, that can be insufficient if they're still vomiting. We may need to put some directly into the veins in the legs so that they actually get fluids into their circulation. Many people with dogs with pancreatitis will think about using a bland diet. And for many, many years, that has often reflected something like chicken and rice as a cooked diet. Now, there are two aspects to that. One, whenever you cook chicken, especially roast it at high temperature, there is a risk of increasing some of the um, acrylamides and protein structures within there made by a myeloid reaction. That actually can increase inflammation within the intestine. Similarly, high starchy foods like rice, again in excess, 
can increase inflammation with the in the intestine. Therefore, there is a risk that that bland food could excite the pancreas and the pancreatitis through that inflammatory process. So we advocate actually giving raw foods, actually thinking about bone broths, um, and actually anything to do with reducing the inflammation in the intestinal tract.